What's up, y'all? We're talking about a classic today, Plush. This is a song called Plush. You know it. Okay, let's get into it. Yes, I'm playing it on an acoustic guitar. Okay, this part's not too bad. Um, it's a really cool lick. I am, one thing that I'm really doing that you want to check out is I'm muting the low strings with my thumb. You can do it mostly by avoiding them, or you could actually also, if you wanted to, you could do it as right hand muting, you know, um, by placing your hand on the bass strings. I'm kind of doing all of the above because I'm a control freak, so. Um, and I'm putting the hands together. So I'm really only playing the top, the smallest four strings, and I'm starting with a G chord, just fretting on the third fret of the high E string, and then walking up the B string. I'm using these fingers, this is how I do it, and I like that little hammer on there. I'm not even sure if that's there on the recording, but I like to do it that way. Um, and I do it, if you watch the right hand, for some reason, that's how I do it. I'll go down, up, down, down, down. Very inconsistent, but it sounds good to me, so I do it. I might do it slightly differently on an electric guitar, but to me, to do all those down strums in a row, it just sounds a little rushed or something. It's, it doesn't have the character I want it to have. And then this is just such a cool chord that comes after that. He might even, I think maybe he doesn't even actually play the D string on that one. And so this is a G diminished chord. <clears throat> um, is a good name for it, a good as any. And this is sort of an A minor seventh chord. Back to our G. And I play that open D in there because I like it nasty, what can I say? Oof. So there's your intro. And then as far as the verse, I got a question today about how to create some percussive effects in between the chords of the verse, which go G and then D with the with the third, and this is sort of a no-no. I'm doubling the third um, <clears throat> in certain circles. It's considered a no-no, but um, you hear that in the bass. And then F. I'm doubling the bass by using my thumb, I should say, on the second fret of the low E string. <clears throat> and then the F. And then C. I don't actually double the third on that because I don't think it sounds very good in that register. So I'll actually play the C with first finger on the first fret of the B, second finger on the second fret of the D, third finger on the third fret of the E, and fourth finger on the third fret of the A. Because to me that sounds a little more rocking than, you know, depending on how you hit it, nah, I still don't like it. I'm just not a fan. So. G, D with F sharp, F, C, and then I, E flat major seven. <clears throat> um, maybe only playing the the uh, the middle four strings, but maybe possibly also hitting the top the first string. So. Um, the way that I'm playing it is just to make it a little bit easier the way that I'm sitting with the guitar. I'm sitting with the guitar not in classical position with the neck way up, but um, kind of more mandolin position. So um, you can see I'm, I'm actually fretting this chord a little bit more like you'd fret a mandolin with the angle of the fingers not being parallel to the strings. That's That works for me because it also allows me to mute this low E string with my thumb again. And then, uh, I gotta start over. Oh. Where does that go? Sorry, E flat, F, back to the G. So, <clears throat> 
about the percussion. Wait, I want to finish with that E flat. So if you imagine how to get the fingering of this E flat chord is if you imagine a C chord, and then you imagine the crazy idea of actually fretting that C chord with your second, third, and fourth fingers. What? Okay, and then just let go of your second finger so you get a beautiful C major seven chord like that. You're just gonna move that up one, two, three frets and then put your first finger there at the third fret there and get that very, very pretty E flat major seven. And then go to the F. Uh, you know, I'm doing it as a partial bar again because of how I'm sitting with the guitar. Like I don't, um, if you see, if you see me like well, I can't really show you like that. Well, I can do it like this. If if I'm sitting with the guitar like this, I have to really lean over to get a full bar on that. Um, and you can do it, you know, it's like sort of, you can accommodate your body to playing the full bar. So if you prefer that, you know, go, go ahead and do that. I just will very often, when I'm seated with the guitar and the guitar uh, neck is sort of more level to the ground, I'll play the thumb over F again like a more mandolin technique and it allows me to move between like that very easily between the E flat major 7 and the F okay <clears throat> so finally the first thing I would do to work on these percussive effects is just put a back beat in because this goes one and two three and four one and two three and four one and two Oh, that's the tricky one. Okay, the easiest way to manage that one is go one. Right, this would be like three and a four e. Three, three and a four e. So I'm going three down, up, down, up. Now, how do I get that? I'm just letting all my fingers on my left hand go limp but they're still touching the strings. So we would call this left hand muting because I am muting with the left hand. It's over there. So, and you might just work on that gesture a little bit. So you go down, down, up, down. And you just watch how I'm moving as I'm, as I'm am playing the percussive strokes right there, I'm actually moving my left hand at the same time to get to in position to form the F. And I'm actually playing those muted st strings, just a couple of strings, not a whole lot of strings, and the trick is in balancing the volume so you don't have too much of that. It's not too loud, louder than the chords maybe. Um, but it's really cool because that last chord that they play there of the of the verse is on the second sixteenth of beat four. So, yeah, yeah it's it's four E, three and a four E, and then you can add um, the other percussive. Then it'll be fairly easy, I think, to add the percussive effects between the next chords because if you go, oh sorry. Right, one and two. And so what you're, all you're gonna do in there is go one and two, and a one and two, and a. And notice, just watch the left hand while I do this, because I'm gonna limp the fingers, but also in certain cases, I think like with the D chord, see there with the G chord, I just go limp, but I also let the first finger flatten out across the strings here, so that, <clears throat> so that it's muting the open G and uh, D strings. D. But with D, you've got these open D and A strings and you don't really have any fingers over them and I'm not Richie Havens and I can't really reach all the way across with my thumb. So I'll go just like that on beat two. I'm releasing the chord which also is helpful because I'm going to this F, so I've kind of got the fingers in position to go to the F. One and two, and a three and four, and a one and two, 
and a three. From the C, check that out. <clears throat> I'm pulling my thumb up and over almost for no reason. Oh, actually, there is a reason. So, again, I'm just letting the fingers go limp. But the thumb's coming up and over to kind of help get double duty on the muting the low E string because if I have just the, th with the way my hands are, if I just have this finger on the low E string, I get a little harmonic. But if I put my thumb across it too, I get a deadened sound. So <clears throat> that's, I guess, how I devised doing that. But it's the same, same method, essentially. I'm taking the chord and I'm just kind of melting it so that all the strings are muted to get that muting effect. No, no real harmonics ringing through. And in most cases, it's because I have more than one finger muting the string. It's hard to see, but the underside of my pinky finger is actually touching this string, as is my first finger. And the second finger is probably getting touched by both the pinky finger and the first finger. It's going to be, and across the board, I'm trying to touch them in two places if I can. And it's just something you have to kind of play with by sound. Check the sound of each string over and over again. Kind of obsess on each chord. And then, let's see, where were we? Uh, and then... Back to the 3 and a 4 E. I'll play the whole thing again now so you can kind of watch the hands. I'll try to play it. I'm going to play it slow. So <clears throat> that's that's the nut of it. Let me do it one more time. Beautiful. It's a wonderful riff and a really cool a really cool song from Stone Temple Pilots back in the 90s when we were all grunging out okay people thanks for watching if you liked this please please uh, you know uh, subscribe and drop me a comment if you have questions and uh you know hit the alarm bell and all that stuff and um yeah come say hi in the comment section ask me a question see you thanks a lot bye